We've posted our full review of the Galaxy S4 and a bunch of comparison videos, so you know how we feel about the device. But we haven't gotten to show you all of the features Samsung has packed into its new flagship. So let's remedy that. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is your guided tour of the special features of the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now, we've already covered some of the more visible features like S Health in our full review at pocketnow.com, and you should follow us on social media if you don't want to miss future Galaxy S4 features and videos. If you don't see a feature you were expecting to see in this video, odds are it's in our full review or in one of our comparison videos, so check those out. Also, we're not covering all the features that were introduced in last year's Galaxy S3. Again, check out our earlier articles and videos for that. First up, a correction. I erroneously claimed that AirView was buggy on the Galaxy S4, but it turns out I was just using it incorrectly. Hovering your finger over text in the messaging app will provide a preview only of text that extends beyond the window, so short messages will not produce a bubble. That's a little inconsistent. I don't really like it, but it makes sense. The bottom line is I got that wrong, and I apologize. It works as it should. There are many more exotic features than just AirView in the Galaxy S4. We talked a little about how its companion feature, Air Gesture, is too buggy for its own good in our review, but we didn't elaborate on how many features it actually contains. Under the Air Gesture submenu are a series of toggles that allow you to control what the feature does and doesn't do. The first is Quick Glance, a very smart addition which lets you wave at the device to display the date, time, and missed notifications. The next, Air Jump, lets you scroll web pages in the browser with a wave over the gesture sensor. Air Browse is familiar from our testing in the gallery, but it also allows you to change the currently playing music track with a wave, which is cool. Air Move is definitely the most convoluted way we've ever seen to move an icon from one home screen to another, but it works if you've kept your kung fu training up to date. Finally, there's Air Call Accept, which lets you pick up the phone by, you guessed it, waving over the sensor. You also have the option to start the call right in speakerphone mode, which is logical. For those wondering where the gesture sensor is that enables all this action, Samsung has provided a little information on that as well. Say what you will about the company, it sure does a good job of educating you on how to use its features. As a little nugget of hardware info here, we should also mention that you can use the Galaxy S4's display through thin gloves, or, as in our example, through light fabric. That might matter a lot to you folks in colder climes, but keep in mind that thicker gloves still won't work. The motion menu has definitely been cleaned up a bit compared to its earlier incarnation on the Note 2, and we have an interesting mix of familiar and new features here. Direct Call is still here, one of our favorite features that allows you to switch from a text exchange to a phone call just by putting the phone to your ear. Smart Alert has also made the cut detecting when you pick up the phone, and buzzing you with a little vibration to let you know you have notifications waiting. There's also Zoom, which lets you press two thumbs to an image in, say, the gallery, and tilt the device to push in or expand, a feature whose forebears we remember from the old Samsung Instinct way back in 2008. There's also the Pan feature, which uses the accelerometer to let you look around inside a photo as if you were standing at the center of it. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but it's a fun toy to use once. Finally, the old turn-over-to-mute functionality has made its return, a very handy feature that lets you silence a ringer or audio track quickly, and which probably works better if you're not using the flip cover. A quick note while we're talking phone calls. Samsung has retained its reject list functionality, which is a lifesaver if you're constantly getting harangued by spam calls. Like this one. This is a spam number. It and others like it make your life harder Add them to your reject list. This is Meredith calling to help you reduce your payday loan balances. Excellent. I've really, really been needing to reduce my payday loan balance. Thank you so much for calling. The last of the special Samsung gesture inputs that we'll mention in this section is palm gestures, which let you initiate a screen capture with a Xerox-like sweep of the hand. And it also lets you mute or pause audio by pressing your hand on the screen during playback. Hopping over into the smart screen category, we see some old favorites like Smart Stay and Smart Rotation, and Samsung continues its full disclosure approach by letting you know about every possible condition that could make these features not work. It's great that Samsung does this, but with so many issues, you start to wonder why the features were included in the first place. 
but we already mentioned that in our review, so let's move on. Smart Pause is one of the newer features the company played up in the Galaxy S4 announcement. It's supposed to pause a video you're playing in the stock player when you look away from the screen and then resume when you look back. And it does. In great lighting. In dim or dark or really anything but perfect lighting situations, you know, the conditions best suited to watching video on your phone, it doesn't work at all. And that's pretty weak. Speaking of weak, Smart Scroll is quite possibly the biggest waste of space in the entire Galaxy S4 suite. It lets you scroll a page in the browser by moving your head, or the device. It's fun in a whiz-bang kind of way, but it's subject to the same limitations as Smart Pause, as far as lighting goes. And if you still have your fingers, it's way easier just to scroll with them. That's not a joke, by the way. This could really be a cool feature for the handicapped, but in that case, it's an accessibility option not a feature you pitch hard to your entire customer base. Speaking of esoteric features, let's talk about group play for a second. This is a feature that for most won't come in handy all that often, but it's still fun and cool. Group play sets up a wireless link between Galaxy S4 devices to allow for sharing of documents and photos and media, but its most visible feature is turning two or more devices into multiple speakers playing the same audio track, so you can get a stereo effect with more than one device. Again, it won't appeal to everyone, but it's a pretty fun feature to show off at parties. It's a lot more fun when you have friends around, though. We've examined prepackaged titles like the Samsung Hub and S Health in other videos, so let's wrap up by taking a look at two other pieces of included software, S Translator and the Easy Mode feature. S Translator is a pretty straightforward translation app, and there are at least a few more capable titles available for download in the Google Play Store. But bundled aboard the device like it is, it eliminates one additional step for the user, and it does a pretty good job of translating our spoken words on the fly. <laughs> For some travelers, this included out-of-the-box functionality will prove quite handy, especially for new smartphone users. It's that last group that Samsung really wants to court with the Galaxy S4. The company couldn't stop talking about how easy to use it wants to make the device. Easy Mode does just what it sounds like. It condenses the Android experience down to a very usable, very simple interface. It's not just skin deep, either. Easy Mode reaches down into stock apps to simplify their layouts as well, making a pretty comfy and safe environment for folks new to a smartphone. It does make the device feel a little childlike, which maybe is unavoidable, and we're left asking the question why the target customer wouldn't just save the money and buy an actual stripped-down budget smartphone instead. But for someone eventually looking to graduate to a smartphone who's going to use Easy Mode as an intermediate step, it makes sense. In a nice touch, when you're ready to return to the full home screens of TouchWiz, the phone remembers your settings and preferences. Maybe you'll end up turning all these features on and using them to their full extent. More likely, you'll be like us and shut most of them off to conserve power and system resources. Either way, we've barely scratched the surface of the total feature offering Samsung has packed into the Galaxy S4, but hopefully we've touched on the major facets you were hoping to learn more about in the company's newest flagship. I've said it throughout the whole video, folks. We have a ton more on the Galaxy S4 at pocketnow.com and here on YouTube. Make sure you check those out. Drop us a like on this video if you enjoyed this one. Leave a comment. Let us know what else we forgot, and we'll try and get to it in a future video or editorial. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.